O salutare sosia, cui celi pandi sosium, bella premutosilia, darobo fe auxilium. Unitrino pedomino, si sempite na gloria, qui vitam sine temino, nobis donet in patria. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you, I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you, I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here, freeing us from fear. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, raising us to hope. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, filling us with grace. I worship you, I worship you. You are here, giving us your peace. I worship 
worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Good evening, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. How are you doing today? I'm very fine. Missing Father Matthew already. We thank God for this opportunity given us to gather together again to worship him who is ever with us and exposed before us in a most special way in the blessed sacrament. In the season of Lent, let us reflect on what the Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us are the eminent good works. I'm sure we know what they are, right? the eminent good works, which we put to practice, especially, the church emphasizes them, especially during the season of Lent. What are those works? Okay, those will, would fall under one of them. <laughs> there are three, okay? One. Prayer. Okay, I'm sure we know the other two. <laughs> Fasting. And what? Okay. <laughs> yes, there they are. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving or alms deeds. What's so special about them? Why does the church call them eminent good works because of the special fruits they bear and they entail the totality of our being either personally okay in the individual who does or practices them or in every other thing around her or him now in prayer the person offers himself in his heart and in his soul, raising that up to God. So all his love is given to God, all his being, okay? Especially in the spiritual dimension is given to God. All his being, especially in the spiritual dimension, is brought into communication with God. Prayer. In fasting, all his being, especially in the physical dimension, his body is given to God. He denies himself or she denies herself for the sake of God and for the sake of neighbor, that he or she may become more conscious of God, emphasizing God 
and diminishing focus on the self or emphasizing neighbor while diminishing the emphasis or focus on self. And so with all the powers and senses of the body, the person renders or oh, okay. The mic is not working. <laughs> okay. 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 Is it? Okay. Okay. Uh, is it? Oh, gr okay, great. It's on now. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> so I don't tempt anybody to shout in. <laughs> okay. So in fasting, with our body, we honor God and we also focus on neighbor. In the third, by alms deeds, we return to God and we give to neighbor everything outside of the self. All that we receive from God outside of the self our possessions, okay? That is what we give in arms deeds. And so, these works summarize the entirety of all that we render to God and to neighbor in Christian service. Now, the first of them is what we will deal with today. Prayer. Prayer. Of course, we know what prayer is simply defined as a lifting of the mind and heart to God. Of course, some will say lifting of the soul and the heart to God, which we talked about, of course, when we were talking about prayer. Okay? And of course, when we lift that up to God, we meet God. There is a dialogue, okay? So God speaks to us, whereupon we are silent and we listen, and we speak to God, not necessarily vocalizing what we say. It could be simply our hearts speaking to God without voiced words. The church teaches us in the Catechism from Catechism Numbers 2632-2639. The different types of prayer. The different forms of prayer. Mind you, they are not mutually exclusive. So you don't expect, okay, maybe when we do this, then none of the others is done. No, they are not mutually exclusive. However, we can distinguish these five forms. The first, prayer of blessing and adoration. Blessing and adoration. If I go on talking, let's read some scriptural verses that point to these prayer forms. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 to 14, talk about this form of prayer. We also have 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 to 7, and thirdly, 2 Corinthians 13, Verse 14, we will take two of them, the shortest two of the three. So we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 
verses 3 to 7. Okay. Please permit me to read. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, a gentle Father and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can offer others in their sorrows the consolation that we have received from God ourselves. Indeed, as the sufferings of Christ overflow to us, so through Christ does our consolation overflow. When we are made to suffer, it is for your consolation and salvation. When instead we are comforted, this should be a consolation to you, supporting you in patiently bearing the same sufferings as we bear. And our hope for you is confident, since we know that sharing our sufferings, you will also share our consolations. The emphasis is on the first verse. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, gentle and God of all consolation, in blessing, man recognizes God who gives him gifts. St. Paul, in this passage, focuses on the consolation. He calls it consolation we receive. So in blessing God, we acknowledge that which he gives us. We bless him. We recognize he is our God, and we acknowledge that which we have received from him. St. Paul goes on, to tell us what we may do with that. That what we receive from God, we may use also for others. We may give to others. So what we receive from God, first we acknowledge him who is the giver. And what is the highest thing, the highest grace we have received from God? Mentioned in that first verse our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the highest grace man has received from God. And so in blessing God, we acknowledge what he has given to us. And so there is this mutual blessing. The church will, would distinguish two forms of blessing. The blessing that descends, obviously from whom? From the Father who gives us consolation and the blessing that ascends in our prayer in the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. And so Jesus is the intermediary. Through him we receive everything, the descending blessings from the Father. And with the Holy Spirit by which we pray, by whom we pray, through Jesus Christ we send blessings to the Father recognizing or acknowledging the grace, the many blessings that we have received from him. That is the prayer of blessing. Now, adoration. 2 Corinthians 2, 13, 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Beg your pardon. Chapter 13, verse 14. Okay. Here we are. St. Paul here. It says, okay. Of course, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Adoring God in the Trinity. Now, what does the prayer of adoration entail? Man recognizing his creatureliness. Man recognizing his creatureliness before God, who is creator, and therefore in humility worshiping or adoring. Of 
because all that we are. Perhaps this would explain why you have both of them together, blessing and adoration. Remember what the prayer of blessing is, acknowledging the God who gives us graces, consolations, the God who blesses us. And so what is the first blessing we have received from him? As we are our very selves, right? Unless you are, you couldn't know if you're receiving anything else, right? Yes. So we acknowledge our creatureliness before God. And so we give him his due. The Catechism would also teach that the due of God or justice to God is what we call religion, okay? Whereby the creature worships, adores God. So blessing and adoration, the first form of prayer. Next, we have the prayer of petition or supplication. You could also hear several other usages in the Bible. You hear cry, plea, beseech, okay? Even struggling in prayer, as the Catechism teaches, the prayer of petition or supplication. Now, basically, this refers to the one who recognizes he or she has a relationship with God. And so can ask him for his or her needs. First, the, the one who prays recognizes he or she has a relationship with God and so can ask for his or her needs. And so it could be seeking forgiveness, flowing from the humility of adoring the Lord and knowing our nothingness, our unworthiness, for the many times we fall short of the demands of the divine, our creator, in humility. A first petition can be seeking his forgiveness. Another is in seeking the grace to do his will, which in the Lord's Prayer is, thy kingdom come. The grace to do his will, okay? And then every other kind of need could come up. Forgiveness, of course, you acknowledge that you are not worthy of the God with whom you are in this relationship, especially having fallen short of his commands, breached the love that he demands of us. And so in humility, before the creator, we seek forgiveness, our first petition. And having forgiven us, we ask that we not sin anymore. How? By doing his will. And so we seek that his kingdom come. Okay, that is the prayer of petition. Let's see Romans 15, verse 30. We'll just take one. Romans 15, verse 30. But I beg you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Spirit, to help me through my dangers by praying to God for me. Now, St. Paul asking, recognizing that these brethren he writes to have a relationship with God. And so they could make petition to the Lord for him. Which brings us to the next form of prayer. And so with one stone, I am killing two birds. The prayer of intercession. And so I'm not going to read another passage. St. Paul asks the brethren to offer prayers for him. So the prayer of intercession is the prayer that the Christian or the child of God 
offers to God a petition to God for another, not for the person praying now. And so, when petition is for the self, strictly speaking, we could simply say petition or supplication, okay, for the self. But when it is for another, properly speaking, we are talking intercession here. That is the third form of prayer. The fourth is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Ordinarily, our minds would go to the first form of prayer, which is blessing. When you give me something, I say, oh, thank you. When you receive from me, you tell me, thank you. Yes, like I mentioned, these forms of prayer are not mutually exclusive. However, what distinguishes this one? The prayer of thanksgiving is one that is accompanied with offering. Offering. Offering something in gratitude for what has been received. And so, like we do at every Mass, after the liturgy of the Word and some meditation, that we may celebrate the Eucharist, what happens? We come forward with our offerings, right? And Eucharist in itself, what does it mean? The Eucharist that we celebrate, what does it mean? From Greek, you, e EU, good. And charistia, or charis, grace, okay? Good grace. For those who speak French, you know, the word for thanks or thanksgiving is what? Grace. <laughs> yes. Merci is saying thank you. Yes. Okay. Or grace. Okay. Thanks. Thanksgiving. So, good grace. Thanksgiving. The highest of our thanksgivings, when our ordinary bread and wine are offered by the power of the Spirit and the words of consecration, we offer to God that highest grace we have received, God himself in the person of Christ. And so thanksgiving involves an offering, okay, in acknowledging what has been received from the Creator, okay? That is a prayer of thanksgiving. And finally, the fifth, praise, the prayer of praise. What is this? Simply giving thanks or blessing the Lord simply for who he is. Not for anything we have received now. Okay? For that we have received his blessings, we bless him. In coming forward for what he has given us with our earthly offerings, okay, or earthly gifts, we offer them in thanksgiving, but without considering anything we have received from him, but in himself, for himself, we praise him, we laud him, we extol him simply for being God. That is the prayer of praise. And all of these are put together in masterful fashion by the Lord himself who teaches us, teaches us how to pray. St. Cyprian would say, there is no better way to pray than using the words of God himself, the words of Christ, who teaches us how to speak to the Father. And so, let's look at Matthew chapter 6, 
verses 7 to 13. We might not even need the Bible to, to say what it says, because we say it at every Mass and at every day of our lives. Okay? So, verses 7 to 13, it says, In your prayers, do not babble as the pagans do. For they think that by using many words, they will make themselves heard. Do not be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. So you should pray like this. Our father in heaven, may your name be held holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have forgiven those who are in debt to us. And do not put us to the test, but save us from the evil one. And then in the liturgy, we would add, For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Where may we situate the different forms? The prayer of petition and intercession are combined. Okay, both are combined in the simple petitions we find here. Remember, ordinarily, petition for self, supplication. Petition for the other, intercession. All right, and so we've got the petitions there. We beg God's mercy. We seek that his will be done. And we beg that he keep us from all evil, from falling to temptation, and to keep us from all evil. Pray for ourselves as well as for the neighbor. And that is why it is the plural that is used. Okay? Deliver us. Do not put us. Give us. Okay? And in seeking his will, it is not just for the self but indeed for us all. In blessing the Lord, we recognize he is our Father in heaven. May his name be held holy, okay? In adoring him, in praising him, in blessing him. Who gives us, in asking him that he give us this day. We recognize we have not only lived this day, right? There are days that have come. In our trust, we thank him for that which he has given us, okay? And so we ask for that of today. And we continue doing this for ourselves, for our neighbor, and uniting ourselves with Christ, who teaches us to call God our Father. We offer the sweetest thanksgiving to God. That explains why we have the Our Father said just before the consecration, okay, or during the consecration in the sacrifice of the Mass. And then we come forward in communion to receive Christ, showing our bond with one another under our one Father. And so this period of Lent, we beg the Lord for the grace to adhere to his teaching, to pray as he has taught us with all our heart, with all our soul, for the needs of the world, for our personal needs. In thanksgiving to him, to God, for the gift of our being, for all that he gives to us, especially the gift of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who redeems us and reconciles us to the Father. This is what he calls us to do this period of Lent. May he indeed accompany us throughout the season and even after till the end of our days. Amen. Through the waters, I'll be with you. You are.
Someone before you once again, Lord Jesus. We acknowledge you as our Lord, as our God, as our Savior, as our Redeemer, our Creator. We give you thanks for all you have been and done for us. If we were to count our blessings, they are numberless. We would never finish. Indeed, eternity is too short to praise you, to bless you, to give you thanks for all you have done. Even if we were to present you the whole world, it would not match what you have done for us. We adore you our God, our Creator, for giving us the gift of our being, fashioned in your image and after your likeness, sharing in our humanity, you lift us to participate in divinity. We bless you. We cannot stop thanking you. We adore you for your majesty, for your greatness that surpasses our imaginations. Be exalted, O Lord our God. Standing and kneeling before you this evening, we acknowledge our nothingness before you. We acknowledge our sinfulness. We do strive to please you. For we know that the best we could offer without you would be nothing. Many times we fail 
even when we don't mean to. We come in humility before you, seeking your grace that we may be lifted from our helplessness, that your grace may transport us to the sanctity we desire, fit for you, our God and our King. Cleanse us of our iniquities. Grant us the grace to become the very best we could be for you, for your glory and honor. Heal us of our pains, of our sicknesses, of our ailments. Heal all your children whose names are mentioned in our parish newsletter. And for all those whose names are not written, but whom you know indeed, for you know us better than we do ourselves, all those crying out to you that you may take away some burden of sickness, of worry, of war and desolation, of poverty, of joblessness and unemployment, of starvation, of deprivation, of isolation, of neglect, of abandonment. Lord, be you the consolation, be you the sure support. When all else fails, Lord, you show yourself strong for all these. Lift them up from despair, from hopelessness. Let them see the bright light at the end of the tunnel. We pray your divine protection and deliverance from the torments of the evil one who prowls around the world seeking the ruin and destruction of souls. For he has not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. O oh Lord Jesus, you have come that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Free us from the attacks of the evil one, and keep us on the path of righteousness, that we may always praise you for your wonders. Bless us, O Lord, as rain falling from the heavens, let your blessings ever fall on us, that we may bless you in return all our days. Cleanse the tears from our eyes for as many of us as mourn. A bereaved. Show us, O Lord God, the hope, the fulfillment of the hope for those who have departed us as you welcome them into the heavenly realms, in your kingdom where they rejoice with the saints and angels. Grant us that assurance, knowing their faith, those who have left us, their faith has proven sure, their hope not disappointed, that we too may draw strength and live following their good example and be happy in the memories they left and shared with us. We pray for families who are experiencing difficulties, for marriages that are shaky. Lord, it was you who established that sacrament that long covenant, which was not washed away even in the flood of Noah's time. You have sustained the human race through it. Lord, stabilize homes. Grant peace to those who are broken. Be you, O Lord God, the Father to the fathers. 
the husband to the widow, her go to, her sure go to for support, and inspire your people to ever extend a hand of friendship, of support to those who do not have their family anymore. In the silence of our hearts for prayers yet unspoken, we raise our petitions to you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for we trust in you that all our prayers are answered through you, our Lord Jesus, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, our God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
Tanto ego sacramentum, venere mugenui, et articum documentum, no shed a tree Praise the Spirit Supplementum, Sensum Defectui, Genitori Genitoque, Lause Jubilatio, Salus non virtus quoque, sit et benedictio, procendet si abutroque, compassit laudatio.
Blessed be God, blessed be His holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be His most sacred heart. Blessed be His most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary, most holy. Blessed be our holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be the glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her spouse most chaste. Blessed be God in His angels and in His saints. Adoremos in eternum, Sanctissimum Sacramentum, Laudate Dominum, Omnes Gentes, Laudate Omnes populi, conia confirmata e supernos misericordia eius, et veritas domini manet in eternum. Gloria Patri et Filio, et Spiritu e Santo, Sicut erat in principio, et nuc ex sempre, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Adoremus in eternum, Sanctissimum, Sacramentum. Thank you very much, dear brothers and sisters, for your participation these three days in the Lenten Renewal, Monday, Tuesday, and today's Hour of Grace. We pray that indeed the Lord God whom you have come to be with these three days will be with you in threefold may he help you pray with all your heart and all your soul may he strengthen you in your fasts and may he provide for you even as you give to others in almsgiving this period of lent and may he indeed accompany us throughout our christian journey here on earth Till we come to enjoy with the saints triumphant in eternity. God bless you abundantly. Amen.